Hey everybody, back to the new episode of Supernatural. Not gonna lie, I feel like shit. I think you can all understand why backsliding into a theocracy is uh, not fun. And uh, I am gonna watch this episode and feel better in this 40 some odd minutes. And hopefully we can escape from the shittiness of life, but also not disengage from it. Uh, there's so much work to do. Uh, this battle was lost in 2016 and we need to uh, do more. The midterms are coming up and uh, please vote. Vote in primaries, vote in local elections and uh, do something. I am actually really excited for this episode because of the Comic-Con and how they kind of hyped it up. Episode four, uh, and I looked at the title, Baby, that's why I'm wearing this shirt. I'm really excited for what this is gonna be. But going back to last episode, I really, really liked it. Uh, I liked kind of seeing where everyone's at and it, it, it's, a, it's a nice, uh, It's just a nice point in the show to reflect on what happened at the end of the last season and what's coming um, and, and where everyone's at. Uh, you know, Dean and Sam are good, but the thing about Crowley did come up. And I, and I don't think I gave enough uh, thought to what has been happening here. Um, I, I defend Sam on not telling Dean about what happened to or what happened with him and uh, Rowena and uh, going after Crowley because so much has been happening. But this is kind of like a, a larger issue of Dean not knowing that Crowley might be pissed at him because Sam tried to kill him in the first episode when they were going after Amara. If he would have had that information, maybe he would have played that differently. But he was trusting Crowley. But on the same hand, you could also say, well, Sam doesn't know that Dean and Crowley have this connection. Dean hasn't brought it up. So how would he know to prioritize this kind of information? But then on the other hand, you can say, well, the last time Dean had a dark sided buddy <laughs> or someone that they thought of as monsters and a vampire, Benny, it didn't go so well. Um, but Benny was also someone that Dean was kind of keeping close tabs on and not really bringing Sam into that. So like, like everything else with Sam and Dean, we go around and round who's, who's responsible for what they're always kind of like paying each other back for what happened previously. And, and like the whole point of the show, I feel is that Sam and Dean can break, break out of cycles they break out of this michael lucifer cycle the the cain and abel cycle they've got to break out of their own and uh i'm, I'm curious to see if that is something that the show is interested in because even with dean and cass dean let cass wail on him because he felt bad about him himself wailing on Cass last season. But I'm sure Cass not fighting back last season has something to do with the fact that Cass whipped his ass in season eight. So like, I'm I'm in the like minority I feel within the uh, Destio community, but I didn't love that Cass didn't fight back at the end of last season because Dean needed to be stopped. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's not a matter of you not wanting to hurt him. It's you need to stop him. I don't want you to kill him, but he need like Rudy got killed. Like things happened after Dean got away. I wish Cass would have tried to stop him more. And that is something that the show has done before where uh, like the big uh, final scene of season five is Dean letting Sam wail on him and just hoping Sam's in there enough to stop. And that has worked in the past. It worked with Cass, but it's just like the level of 
where Dean was at. He was unrecognizable. So to me, like, I'm still trying to like save Dean from himself in that moment. Or for me, that's what it was. So everything, all these relationships are so jumbled up and the past is informing the present, which informs the future. And I, I really think a, a lot of good would be done by Dean now knowing that Sam tried to kill Crowley. So him going to Crowley to say, hey, I didn't know about that. And if I did, maybe I would have done something about it. Because at this point, it seems like Crowley is just trying to survive in the same way his mother is. Because Amara is a threat that heaven and hell both don't know how to deal with. And Crowley is seeing firsthand that she is a lot. And... Uh, even if we don't necessarily, or for me, I don't think what God did was the ultimate correct solution. What do you do with her? This is kind of like Amara is just the representation of the mark itself from like now it's gone from Dean. It didn't really get destroyed. It's just back to where it originally began with the darkness. So what do you do with a child maybe she won't be a child any longer or much longer and it'll be an easier choice but what if it's someone that is not wanting to be evil i think that's something that sam and dean have had to deal with a lot when when it comes to what a monster is because within every species of being that we have seen maybe with the exception of leviathan there's always people that are trying to overcome their conflict. Uh, that is what would get them killed. It's like if, if the thing that you do is drink human blood or take human souls, is there a way to survive and it not be an evil? <laughs> like all of that is very interesting to me especially with all the talk of God and how this world is set up and what should you actually do with someone like Amara and what the boys are going to do about her in particular is very interesting to me. And uh, I, I, I think that Dean should, I think the best person to take care of Amara is Dean. They do have a connection and he has a lot of experience taking care of some like sam's still alive so you know <laughs> would it destroy the world if uh dean cared enough about this amara to protect her like there's some big ideas on the table right now that's why i'm really excited for this new season that in addition to last episode where all of the relationship stuff was happening like that's supernatural at its best it's managing the huge issues with the personal and you know that is sam and dean's conflict right now so i'm very much into what this season is or so far you know only three episodes and but uh, with this episode being titled Baby, is something going to happen to the car? Um, that, <laughs> you want to set Mark and Kane Dean off, they should have had something happen to Baby. <laughs> that would have saved Charlie. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what's about to happen. But I'm very excited for this episode. And uh, I'm excited to... <sighs> take a load off and watch something that makes, that gives me joy. And uh, I haven't had a lot of that. So uh, yeah, I was gonna do it. Oh goodness. Oh my God, what happened? Dean, what? Oh no, oh what? Oh. Well now that was an opening scene. What the fuck? Well, Nathan's case, it's that big. 
Tim works. This is just a milk run. We got it. So it definitely lives. is not that. Right. Read a book. Watch some Netflix. What's a Netflix? <laughs> oh my God! We have not left the car. She's here tonight. She never takes me back. That's not the point. The point is, is that we have a ton of driving left to do. Are we gonna leave the car? We're not. <gasps> oh my God! <laughs> this is fun. Please, we're Sam. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Can only imagine. Oh! Who are you? You kids take your time. <laughs> God, is this the first time Sam's hooked up since his re virginification? This is too I cute. Now. Out of the of my oh, we got Jared singing. There we go. I tried to give her my number. Did you? you know what she said? Who got tonight? Who needs tomorrow? <laughs> everything is on lyrics. Is everything a Bob Seger? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ever want something more? Uh oh. I'm sorry. Have you met us? Not marriage or whatever, but something. You know, with a hunter, somebody who understands the life. Have you not heard a single That's word? That's all I've been wanting. Hey, listen to. Listen to it really Your highlights how so often they're in there. Dad? <gasps> what is this? Another vision? Are you having visions, son? More? Don't call me that. Oh. What a father can't call is... My father is dead. We turned out okay. <laughs> you did, didn't you? The darkness is coming. It's here. God helps those... Who help themselves. Like Who the are story. You? I think I've been having visions too. Thank you for saying so. I mean, it's just images. I mean, more of a feeling. Did they happen to give you any helpful tips on how to do that? Not at all. He said God helps those who help themselves. That's not helpful. They've been helping I mean, maybe themselves. Visions are coming from God. Whoa. Bump the bricks. I mean, the first one happened after I prayed. Why? Because I was infected. Oh my god, I saw it coming out! That's an old proverb, dates way back to Aesop. Damn, Dean. I read. He does! And more importantly, when was the last time he just does like research? What's the difference? I had that dream every couple of months. It's kind of comforting, actually. Just wanted validation. I always dream about mom. <gasps> oh my god! Usually the same kind of thing, though. Maybe whatever is the opposite of the darkness is sending messages to me. And you think that this thing is God? That Come on, how many of the opportunities God had to crack this pinata? And I don't see any candy on the floor. Okay, then maybe it's not God. This is taking us back yeah, to probably not. how it used to be, where Sam really believed in God <laughs> and his mercy. Good night, Jared. I can't believe this. That bitch. <laughs> oh my God, this is amazing. This is an amazing episode. Oh my god, these conversations are gold. Werewolf vampire hybrid? Say with Starship. A, a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. It's the best damn steak in the whole state. You had me at steak. <laughs> Good for you, girl. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> That car has never hurt M.I.A. Okay, that's enough of the donuts. Where's my purse? You probably just left it in your car. What? I gotta go. I don't want to get fired. Ugh. Girl, her purse is still in there. Well, there is a creature that feeds on hearts and blood. A werepire, you might say. Come on. I know you want to say it's it. not going to catch on. In the lore, it's referred to as a whisper. It's lame. Silver will kill it, but you may want to decapitate it just to be sure. I don't believe what you're hunting is a whisper. <gasps> I knew it's it! Another creature of some kind. Oh okay. my god, Cass! I'll say it. Dean, what is that? <laughs> Dean? Gunshots. Uh, turns out I did shoot the deputy. Will you stop Wait, with Dean, that fucking joke? Is everything? Deputy was a werepire. <laughs> all right. 
The next solar eclipse in North America is years away. It can't be a... Hang on. Dean, wait. <laughs> How do you get... Yeah, I'm starting to get that. It's still going. <laughs> this is so fucking funny. Is Cass still on the phone? All right, Cass. <laughs> Silver slows it down. Oh my god, what? Dean, I got jumped. You okay? Ghoul and vampire like creature. A ghoul pyre, right? Let it go. <laughs> Some feed on the flesh of the dead, others feed on the blood and hearts of the living. According to the Meadow Letters records, you're gonna need a copper coin. Before 1982, pennies were 95% copper. Since then, they're only copper plated zinc. Wow, your nerdiness knows no bounds. You knew about Aesop. All right, well, thanks, guys. <laughs> Good work. Way to come off the bench. It's like the thing that attacked you, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a goo pyre. <laughs> the point is, it can't hurt you anymore. At least I don't think it can. It's... I did it wrong. Now I've ruined everything. This isn't your fault. That's I heavy. put my family at risk. They were right to attack me. But I know how to make it right. <laughs> Kill all the Winchesters. That what is. Do to make body? Oh my! Oh my God! Jesus! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> this is. So cool. Okay, here we go. Okay, in media res. See, that wasn't so hard. But everyone deserves a mulligan, don't they? Whose hairpin is that? Sam's That's hookup? That's what people were trying to do, Lily. They weren't going to kill you. Hell, I need you. But he had not told me. Yes. In the first hundred years? Three. Whoa. Last month, 16. Whoa. Try to field the baseball team? It's like I said, I need help. Y'all should probably take note. I need an army. Oh, man. To fight the darkness. Oh man, that's true. Your brother will make a fine addition to the rank and file. No, come on. Well, you slept. Sam doesn't Sam's join packs. your phone. He's a lone wolf. <laughs> oh, he's heading into a trap right now. <laughs> Thank you, hairpin. Yeah, that would have been helpful. Not the first. Pennies! Oh my god, is that where you're gonna get the copper? This is brutal! Baby has a weapon. She always comes through. How many times? My kids. My kids, you turn. My kids are with the others. Please. Sometimes you gotta team up, man. With someone that was just kicking your ass. <laughs> you put her through a lot. Damn, he loves that car. <laughs> this is the coolest episode ever. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we know nothing, right? <laughs> Are you all right back there? Uh, yeah. You know he was trying to build an army. Yeah, I know. To fight the darkness. Maybe y'all should. Dean, even the monsters are scared. Well, let him be. <sighs> we get Cash to fix you up. Only if he fixes you up too. Right. Okay, mom. Someone's got to be. Go home. <laughs> you know what? We are home. Oh, oh my God! Wow. He looks bad. Wow. Wow. That was an incredible episode. I want to give it a standing ovation. That was incredible.
the rewatchability on this episode is going to be out of this world because I feel like you can pick up on so much of what happened. Everything was meaningful here. And uh, the way they did it was such style. And that totally tracks when it is all from baby's POV. I mean, what's cooler than the Winchesters rolling up in that Impala? Come on. It's so badass. And to see everything from the car's perspective, how much they're in it, how much it is their home. Oh my God, that was incredible. I loved it. Oh my God. Wow, I, I, I don't know where to start. Everything, every conversation, and there were many, which is what I love. It kind of feels like that that uh, one episode, like, was it the fourth episode last season? The one with Kate and her sister, where Dean and Sam were just in the car talking a lot. That's kind of what this gave me, but obviously on another level. They had so many conversations about Sam's, visions or premonitions or what the fuck ever they are. They really talked about things in a, in a way that seems like it's important coming off the last episode where Dean reiterated no secrets. So Sam told him about the infection, even though Dean was mad, he hadn't already known about it. It's good that he told him. And uh, now Sam is back on this kind of believing in in God again thing and uh for better or worse I don't think he's quite as uh naive about it he can't be but it feels like how it used to be oh my god <laughs> this was so good they really have to decide what they're gonna do the monsters here were rooted in family and if that's not related if that's not relatable to sam and dean i don't know what is because it's not like they went in and took out all of them they took out the guy who was trying to kill him but you know they're just scared and trying to do what's right for them is this gonna take dean and sam teaming up with the monsters and the demons and the angels and everything like <laughs> I'm still undecided about what it means that sh the darkness is here. Maybe they're afraid for the wrong reasons. Maybe she's not that bad. I mean, eating souls doesn't sound great. And if it gets worse where she has to consume like many a time, like I feel like this could go several directions and I'm kind of unprepared for all of them. And I don't think Dean and Sam have a clue really about the magnitude of what the darkness can bring. At least they haven't clued us in on anything. But this is, this was just incredible. I am, I, am, I love this episode. My top 10 is getting crowded but this may be in there. I love this episode. The talk that Sam and Dean had about like the kind of life they want to have going forward. It's kind of something they haven't talked about in a while for either of them. They haven't really had a love interest since season eight for both of them. No, just for Sam <laughs> and for Dean. Lisa really uh but I love Sam pointing out that it doesn't have to be like, like Dean I think has made a line where he doesn't think he can have that kind of thing again where it's someone waiting at home for him but a hunter someone in the lifestyle I feel like I've been saying that since I started the show um I have a lot of candidates <laughs> on that list 
But uh, yeah, you are getting older, man. You're in your 30s, both of you, I think. And, uh, you know, you could say things married to baby and like this lifestyle, but uh, it's notable that Sam got laid for the first time on the show in a really long time. Obviously, I don't think it's been that long since he's, you know, but uh, since we've seen. And uh, it's just a, an interesting thing for them to do at this point in time in the show. I, I, I got, I have to rewatch this episode. Um, I'm just in awe of it, really. I don't know what to make of the fact that young John Winchester showed up in that moment. Like, obviously, it's probably because they couldn't get Jeffrey Dean Morgan. But, you know, I don't want to take anything away from Matt Cohen because he is very much their dad in the same way that Jeffrey Dean Morgan is. But uh, when you think of who their old man was to them, you think of the older version. They didn't really get to know that version of him, but they did meet him, or Dean did. No, Sam did too. I'm pretty sure it's been a while. But um, what are, what are they? Where are these visions coming from? Is it God? Is it finally? finally him if it is i don't appreciate the message have dean and sam not been trying to help themselves for the past 10 years they should try harder is that what you're saying like what do you want from them but it just puts this season in perspective this seems bigger than it's been in a long time. But the the choice not to have Dean die or Sam die at the end of the last season and killing death, like that is a really big shift in the show, I think. And uh, I can't remember what season it was, but I just remember Dean saying that he was going to go after God. And it, I feel like that was very early on. Maybe after season five. But then he went and had like the regular life with Lisa. I don't know. It just seems like things are finally coming to a head in the way I've been waiting for. And uh, Dean can try to keep it as small as he's trying, which, you know, he just trying to save the next person. But uh, the monsters acting in this way is scary. But it's everyone acting without information. No one really knows what it means. I, I think because the darkness is so old, was it just the darkness and God at that point? So everything that they know about it is from God's perspective, right? Because history is written by the winner. I don't know. I just hope th that Sam learns from past mistakes. Obviously, he's been on a righteous path before. And uh, he got played. So I, I don't want that to be what's happening now. But I do feel good about the fact that this episode emphasized everything I love about Dean and Sam and their relationship. It really took me back to when that was the, it's never not been the main point of the show, but you know, when Team Free Will kind of came on the scene with the introduction of the angels and the world got a lot bigger it, the the 
the plot of the show became on the level of Sam and Dean's relationship. So for them to take it back to basics of just the car and Sam and Dean in their home, working cases, talking about shit, and you know, having Cass being the disembodied voice, like repeatedly, it wasn't just one conversation with him, like he was helping them with the lore. I really appreciated that. Um, there's probably a lot of symbolism there with, with the angel on the phone and uh, how much he has fit into their lives while also kind of still being separated from it. Um, but still at the same time being included and in a part of the narrative. Really love that. Um, yeah, I think this very much encapsulated the show as a whole, but where they're at at this point, which seems like a very important juncture in the scale and arc of the show so far. So I fucking love this episode so much. I know I didn't catch everything that they were really saying here. It's a Robbie episode, a lot's happening. Uh, I just was awestruck by the decisions that were made, the camera angles they chose, how it made Baby feel alive and a part of the family. It almost felt like a living, breathing thing, which is interesting when you're talking about this great evil being the darkness, which doesn't sound like something that would be personified, but it has been. And Baby has got a, kind of been personified here. And I really love that. It, it really pointed out how much Dean loves that car, how much Sam has grown to stop resenting what he's been forced into and embraced it in a way that he maybe, you know, ran from in the past. I just adored this episode. <laughs> it was funny. So much of the scenes with Dean out of the car, but just wrecking everyone. <laughs> being a dope. <laughs> Not like when he backed up. Oh my God. I oh. This is so good. I can't wait to watch it again. Um, I'm, I'm very overwhelmed by everything that was said and done here. But like most of this season, it's a familiar thing at this point. Four episodes in, I am kind of bewildered by everything that they're doing but it really seems like they have a clear idea of what this season will be and i'm just hanging on for the ride in the back seat <laughs> i like that some random chick's hairpin saved the day also the girls who just you know wanted to have a good time and baby also kind of saved the day with the purse being there and the pennies although did the pennies even work I'm not sure. <laughs> I think so. Maybe. I don't know. That was so cool. And <laughs> Dean being so apprehensive to Valley Park and being so, um, you know, you would think if you, you cannot leave the POV of the car, you, it would fuck up the narrative because you can't be like, even when the girls took the car, you're like, what's the point of seeing the girls, you know, they're having a great time, but what does it mean narratively? And it still mattered because of the purse being there and even the girl that Sam hooked up with being, you know, the hairpin that like everything mattered. And that is so impressive in a show that seems like it would be hum hamstrung by not getting to be with Sam or Dean when they're not with the car. It just showed how important baby is that is so great. I love this. <laughs> it's, it's a great, great episode. Uh, and one that I will cherish because I think it said a lot. 
And it's just an encapsulation of why I love the show. So that was sick. I loved it. What an episode. They did that. That will be hard to beat on my top five of the season. And, you know, the season just started, but I can't imagine. So this was excellent. Excellent. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back soon. Please vote.